My name's Sean Olive. I'm the Director of Acoustic Research for Harmon International. I'm also the President-Elect of the Audio Engineering Society. Harmon takes a very scientific approach towards how we measure sound quality in terms of listeners and also how we objectively measure sound in terms of acoustical measurements. So our, our basic philosophy is if you want to measure good sound and develop good sounding loudspeakers, you have to have very accurate subjective measurements and very accurate objective measurements. So over the last few years, we've developed some of the most sophisticated listening rooms, uh, listening test methodologies, uh, and also some of the world's uh, best uh, anechoic facilities as well as uh, measurements. We've actually developed our own measurement system, which we call HATS, which stands for the Harman Audio Test System. My name is Charles Sprinkle. I'm a senior acoustics engineer here at JBL, professional. And I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, uh, how we vo voice our loudspeakers and the metrics that we use. Um, we use a uh, system that measures uh, loudspeakers not in just one location, but in 72 different locations at 10 degree increments across the horizontal and vertical plane. Uh, and what that does is it gives us a better indication of how the loudspeaker is performing in space, not just in one location in the room. It allows us to predict uh, what the uh, perception of timbre will be in the room, uh, what the timbre of the first reflections are going to be. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of the metrics that we use. Uh, the black curve on the top is the direct sound. This is what is picked up directly on axis of the loudspeaker. The green curve is what we call a listening window, and that is a combination of measurements, uh, plus or minus uh, 15 degrees horizontal, plus or minus 10 degrees in the vertical plane. And that tells us about somebody who's sitting nearly in the center of the loudspeaker, what they can expect to hear over that space. The red curve is the first reflections or early reflections, and that's what uh, the listener can expect to hear from the walls and floor and ceiling uh, integrated and how that relates in, in, in timbre. And then the blue curve is the total sound power, which is an integration of all of those 72 measurements together. The blue curve on the bottom is directivity index, or basically how this blue curve relates to the, how the sound power relates to the wind listening window. The red curve is the first reflections directivity index and how the first reflections relate to that on axis, or I'm sorry, the listening window. What, what makes our loudspeakers and how we voice our loudspeakers so unique is that we're paying attention to the first reflections, the total sound power to make sure that that sound is substantially the same in timbre to the on axis frequency response. And what that does is it gives you a, a greater sense of, uh, of imaging of sound stage of depth. Uh, it makes the loudspeaker sound more natural. You'll notice that these green curve, that the actual general shape of these curves are very similar. And you also notice that these directivity index curves are also very smooth. This is something that is fairly unique to JBL loudspeakers. You can have a loudspeaker that has very flat frequency response, so you're only gonna get that frequency response flat in one space. Anywhere else in the room, it's not gonna be right. And you can't make it right. If you don't have good directivity and response, you cannot get that loudspeaker to sound the same in different spots across the room. The time we spend making sure our loudspeakers have good directivity index gives our loudspeakers the ability to sound good, not just in, in one position, but across the entire room. A very broad, sweet spot. It gives the ability, as an example for studio monitors, for a studio engineer to be not just at their primary mix position, but anywhere across the anywhere across the board and get the same story. And to be able to have confidence in the mix that they're creating. So what we've done is we developed our own training process. It's called uh, How to Listen. It's a piece of software we developed. And each listener undergoes several weeks of training where they learn how to identify and describe different distortions that we simulate and add to loudspeakers. And it gives automatic uh, feedback on the performance. It gets more and more difficult as they progress. And it gives us a way to quantify how discriminating <clears throat> and how reliable the listener is so that we only select the very best listeners for our product evaluations. 
So one of the keys to developing really good listening tests is you have to control what we call nuisance variables. These are psychological factors, uh, physiological factors, for example, the listener's hearing, and, uh, and then other physical, other nuisance variables include the, the listening room, the acoustics, the speaker position. And uh, what we've done is we've looked at every possible nuisance variable that can bias or make a test unreliable. And uh, we've taken great uh, strides to try to uh, either remove them or control them. So one of, the, uh, one of the first things we did was develop a listening lab, which we call the multi-channel listening lab. You'll see this in a little while where we have pneumatic speaker shufflers that position each speaker in the exact same position in the room. And that means that every speaker is basically exciting the room. Uh, resonances, the reflections, they're all basically the same for each loudspeaker. Uh, the second major variable that we've controlled is uh, the sighted biases. So we have an acoustically transparent screen, which comes down so the speaker has no, uh, sorry, the listener has no knowledge of what speaker they're listening to. They have no uh, information about the price, the brand. All they, all they have information is the sound, so they're strictly focusing on how good the loudspeaker sounds. And what we do is we go out and we purchase our competitor, competitor's products, and we do A, B, C, D comparisons of our prototype, and we compare them against our competitors. And the goal is to have uh, a speaker that sounds better than our best competitor. What people like, what they prefer, is a very accurate, a very neutral loudspeaker. And that's exactly the goal that we had in developing the LSR 3 Series. Hi, I'm Peter Chaikin. I'm the Senior Manager of Recording and Broadcast Marketing for JBL Professional. And that's the segment responsible for studio monitors, speakers that are used in post-production, recording studios, and broadcast facilities. This is the power test room. Uh, before a speaker becomes a finished design, market-ready design, it has to go through a series of power tests. And the power tests prove that the speaker can stand up to the kind of abuse that it's spec'd for. Assuming it passes that test without the amp blowing up, without the speaker blowing up, without the logo falling off or the grill or anything like that, then from a power test perspective, the speaker is ready for the market. When you buy a JBL professional studio monitor, you know that that design has been through the 100-hour power test. We don't know of anybody else that has this kind of stringent test. What this display shows you is the health of each speaker, how long it's gone through the test, what the signal is that we're putting into it. This measures failure, or it lets you know when the failure occurred, and then of course they do a deep analysis, the engineers do a deep analysis of why it failed, and then their task is to fix that problem so that the speaker passes the 100-hour power test. So I am testing our stadium line of speakers called the PD uh, line, which is the Precision Directivity line. Um, I am testing the SPL, putting it on this lift, uh, measuring the on-axis uh, response, and also running entire polar spins on it to characterize the entire uh, acoustic uh, performance of the speaker. That's measured by putting the speaker on this lift, lifting it up, having a microphone that's six meters away, and essentially putting pink noise through it and simulating the uh, SPL, the transfer function, and numerous other uh, acoustic properties that we could obtain uh, through post-processing. The end result is that we get a complete characterization of our speakers. So we not only get the on-axis response, but we get the response at every angle. We get 3D polar patterns. We get the sound power. We get other things such as like directivity. So we are able to fully characterize exactly how this speaker could perform in different um, environments and let us know, you know, if we need to tweak anything. So it's like the best way to characterize and to actually design a speaker. My name is Paul Bauman. I'm Associate Director of Tour Sound at JBL Professional. I've been with the company seven years and I'm basically responsible for things like product uh, design, conception, and uh, the technical support side of things. Where are we now? This is the, uh, what we call the large arena. It's not a place where we would you know, have a hockey game or a basketball game, but uh, 
We do uh, a lot of product uh, listening tests here. You can see there's a Cinema Perf screen. Uh, we can listen to some Cinema product. We use these four chain motors here when we're doing a Vertag VTX training. We do some uh, hands-on practical work with the systems and uh, go through all the different suspension techniques, listening tests on the different uh, preset options for the, uh, the products. And just for our own use, when we're doing a listening evaluation on new products, we'll set up listening tests in here and uh, sort of sign off products. That's a very powerful tool for developing uh, speakers, uh, uh, being able to optimize their sound quality uh, so we're not wasting money on things that don't matter. We're just focusing on getting these measurements to be such a way that we know with, with high confidence that they're going to sound really good.